Hey everyone, my name is Michael. I'm in charge of customer success at Xano. And if you're watching this video, you probably just completed Jumpstart and you might be using Xano for the very first time. If that's the case, welcome. I'm gonna give you a quick lay of the land and show you how to get started just building something basic here in Xano to get you familiar with the tool and how to start using it. So at the top, I just wanna point out, we have links to our various different resources um, that are really gonna serve you in building your backend, our documentation, our YouTube channel, our forum, um, our support chat, and also Twitter. Now, to get started, we can do that in just a few different steps. First will be to go to the database and add content into our database tables. Then we'll go to the API and we'll show you how that data or content gets sent through the API. Remember, the API is that messenger between our backend and whatever front-end tool we choose to use. So on the left side, you'll notice there's a navigation bar. Here we are on the dashboard. I'm gonna go ahead and click into the database. And when I do that, we'll see these three different tables that I set up during Jumpstart for my deals app example, the user table, merchant table, and deals table. So I can click into these tables. And when we do that, we get this very familiar spreadsheet setup. Um, each one of our database tables is gonna have this ID number and this created at this timestamp for the record. Uh, you'll notice that there's a name, an email, and password here. That's because I selected uh, email login or sign up for my users during Jumpstart. In order to add a new record, I can just click anywhere in this rectangle, and I can click double click into this field here, and I'll add myself as a user. I'll give myself an email address, and I'll just say uh, my password is that. And this all auto saves as we go, which is really easy. So I'll just add one user for now, and I'm going to go ahead and hit back. And next, I'm going to go into my merchant table. So here you see we just have that ID number and the timestamp. So to add another field or column, all I have to do is hit this plus button. This window opens up where we give you all these different field or data types that we can put in here. We tell you kind of the first four most common at the top, but we have all these other more advanced options where there's more information in our documentation on. But for now, I'm gonna do a text field and I'm just gonna say this will be my merchant name and I'll hit save. Additionally, I'll do another text field and I'll just say this is the description of my merchant and hit save. So I'll add a couple merchants here. The first one will be a place called uh, Firestone Grill and they have really good try tip. So I'll put that as the description. And the next place I'm gonna do is a place called uh, High Street Deli and they have really good sandwiches and that'll be the description there. So I've got a couple different merchants here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit back and the last table I'm gonna use will be this deals table. So here I'll do another text field and maybe I'll say this is the type and I'll go ahead and I'll add a couple different deals here. I'll say one is gonna be 10% off and I'll add another record here and it'll be a 50% off deal. There's one other thing I wanna do here. I wanna be able to make a relationship with each of these deals. Maybe I can only do this deal at a single merchant. So how do I do a relationship? Well. I'll go ahead, I'll hit this plus button, and Xano offers us this table reference option. When I do that, we can choose which database table we wanna make a relationship to. So if I wanna associate uh, a specific deal record with a specific merchant, I'm gonna go ahead and select the merchant. And when I do that, we see there's this merchant ID here that populates into the deals table. So I'll go ahead, I'll say this deal one is uh, for uh, Firestone, and maybe deal two is for uh, that High Street Deli. So, I'm gonna go ahead and hit back and now you'll see that I just have just a few lines of data here in my database tables, but now that's enough to play with to see how it gets sent through the API. So I'm gonna go into the API page and APIs are put into groups. So here you notice that we have this public group. So I can actually hit explore in here and this is where we're gonna see all the uh, CRUD API endpoints that Xano auto-generated for us during Jumpstart. And we have these for each one of our database tables and even an authentication table. But the great thing is uh, we can actually jump down to, let's say the merchant table, and I can click into one of these API endpoints. I'll click into this get merchant, which is just gonna return me all the merchant records. And when I do that, we'll see this basic workflow or anatomy of an API endpoint. So there's three different parts. First, we have our input, so any information the API endpoint needs to take. Two is the function stack. This is the inner workings of our API endpoint. Here we can see there's one function, and that's just gonna query all the records in the merchant table. And last is the response to what we're getting back. Uh, back to number two, we call this a function stack because you can add on various different functions to this to build some really powerful business logic. 
The way to do that is to hit this plus button. And here we have all these different options. And when you click into that, there's even more functions to choose from. So I highly encourage you to watch our different tutorials and also read our documentation to find out uh, what suits your best use case. So back to this API endpoint. In Xano, we have this button at the top right that says run and debug. So we can actually run this API endpoint right here in Xano. As you can see for this get, we have no inputs. So if I hit run, what's gonna happen is we're gonna get both my merchant records back or all my merchant records. We see Firestone and also High Street Deli. So that's very convenient. But one other thing uh, before we sign off here is if I wanted to go ahead and get the uh, URL um, for this API endpoint in order to pass it along to a front end, I can just get that from this button right here in one click, copy that to my clipboard. So that's what I would use to actually connect this uh, API endpoint to a front end. So with that, it's just some of the basics, but I hope it's enough for you to get started and start to get familiar with building something in Xano, and I'll see you in other videos.